Hi everyone, I'm Emmanuel Malherbe. I'm the director of research at Artifact, and I have the chance to animate the data coffee. Uh, the concept is simple. We have one topic, one expert, and one coffee. The topic today is MROI, and the expert is Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Hi, Emmanuel. Who are you at Artifact? I'm a um, director of consulting and data in Artifact, and uh, I'm taking care of the topics that are related to marketing measurement. The last time when we had a coffee, we were talking about MMM, so marketing mix modeling and things like that. And today I thought it would be great to continue our discussion and to talk about other things that exist. And what would be the difference compared to what we discussed last time? The main difference would be the approach uh, that companies are using to test the incrementality of their marketing campaigns. And it's not always um, clear that you need to go and you need to start with MMM from the beginning. You know, as last time we discussed, MMM gives you amazing results. It's really the strategic tool that you want to use. But at the same time, it does require quite a big data foundation and uh, you need to understand the whole business agenda that you want to cover with the model. Yeah. So it's quite consuming in terms of resource and data. Exactly. And you need to really, it's a big thing to go for. So sometimes you want to start a bit easier and uh, be it in data foundations or be it, you know, take a step back and redefine your business questions and that's when we go for incrementality testing that we're going to be talking about today. Excellent. Can you tell me a bit more about incrementality testing? Sure, with pleasure. So um, I'll start with a small story. Imagine uh, you are a CMO or head of marketing uh, in, a, in a big company. You guys are selling products all around Europe, in, in the States, in Asia. You have, you have big production line and big, and, and, and big demand on the market. And in every region, you have head of marketing as well, or just a marketing department. So once a year, all of your teams are coming to you and you guys decide what you're going to do for the next year. What is the activation plan? Now, the UK team is telling you that Online video formats are booming. You need to definitely invest there. So you need to separate part of the budget to shoot a very expensive video campaign. But for sure, it's going to work. Then your Italian team is coming to you and they're telling you that, look, uh, yellow banners, they're just not working. The banners need to be red. Otherwise, we're out of business. So basically, you know, every team is coming to you and you've got 25 markets. You've got 25 marketing teams coming to you with their marketing plans. You know, how, how do you feel? I feel completely overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you need to understand because um, a lot of our clients, as you would be in this case as well, don't have a good tool to understand where to invest their money. And also, you're not running an MMM. So you do not have a plan at this point saying that, oh, yeah, I should go for this or I should go for that. So you need, a, you need something else. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have one of our clients who ran incrementality testing. They were in exactly the same situation. That's why I gave you 25 markets, a very global company, big one. And 63% of all of the marketing initiatives that were proposed, so specifically 63% of marketing campaign, planned for the whole year ahead, turned out to be with negative ROI. What does it mean? It means that eventually you spend more on this campaign, then you gain a revenue from it. Which is not good. Which is not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> but 37% were great. So 37% you needed to scale. Imagine that you do it in France, then it works out great. You have a huge ROI. You want to expand this learning experience and you want to bring it to all of the other countries but it's only 37%. So, well, usually if you don't have a tool to test it, you would not even assume that the percentage is that low. You would go, well, maybe 50, maybe 60. No, it was 37 in this example. And that was shocking. So um, 
coming back to the question of incrementality experiments and what are these and why do we use them? We use them exactly to understand what should we scale and what should we not scale. We're very tactical. We receive the plan of the campaigns from all of the market leads, uh, from different brands, different geographies. You can have no matter which uh, differentiation in your company. And we try them. We try every idea. We try them on a small uh, perimeter. We don't do the full country straight away. We don't do the whole budget straight away. We take small pieces of everything and we try. And on this small perimeter, we see if it works and if it doesn't. Then if it works, we bring it everywhere and that's great. And you receive your revenue at scale. And if it doesn't, we, we just stop it. We take our learning from it. And then we take learnings from everywhere during the, the whole year. And at the end of the year, we've understood what is the right format, what is the right channel, what is the right message and the color, and no matter which detail you want to go into for your business. It sounds very agile uh, compared to the big yearly plan. Absolutely. And the interesting thing is that in a mature organization where you have your big marketing measurement programs aligned, these two things work together. You do your experiments, you have your experiments as a part of actually your business as usual. I'll give you another example. We had a client who put 80% of their marketing budget just for incrementality tests in the first year. And after they've learned everything that year, they decreased it to 20% the year after. And they continue for already the second year now with 20% of budget dedicated for testing and learning. Which means that incrementality experiments should become your business as usual. And when you always test new things and you try to get feedback from the market, from the real sales, from the real people who interact with your brand, you then use these results and you feed them back into big MMM initiative that gives you the strategic overview. Because if we remember, MMM is relying on data foundations. And imagine you're working a lot with influencers. Influencers are kind of this type of marketing channel that where you invest a lot, but it doesn't last for long. So you do maybe a couple of days of influencer pressuring the market. But after that, you stop. For MMM, it would mean one or two data points, which is not enough. But if you run the incrementality experiment with a couple of you know, days extended after the influencer appearance, then you can feed these results into your MMM. And your MMM now can know how even such small initiatives in terms of time, but really big ones in terms of how much budget you put into them, influence your business. So they do work hand in hand. And I guess it means a very good diversity of data points when you do incrementality testing. Absolutely. It also encourages you to try different things in your channels. You know, the worst thing for MMM is when I have, you know, TV activation flat like this. I'm always doing the same thing in TV. I'm always putting the same money in TV every day, every month, every year. For a statistical model like that, it means that it's a constant mm. term. It, because your sales are changing, right? And your media is not. It means that you will struggle really a lot to, to understand the impact of this media. And what incrementality testing pushes you to do is to play with investments in TV. Do a bit of a smaller investment in a small scope of your country to understand if this new campaign is going really well, and then invest as usual in the rest of the country. And then if the small campaign works, increase your overall investment in TV and maybe take from some other channels that didn't work, the 63% that we talked about previously. I get it. It's really not just about a lot of data, but to get diverse and rich data. Absolutely. And also to give you a different type of business insights. Because MMM is something that you can run once a year or twice a year. It's going to inform your strategy for the year. So it's really more of a strategic thing that companies are doing. While incrementality testing is more tactical, it's working more with operational teams on the ground. And we observe that both of them can bring more or less the same revenue uplift. So from, for MMM, we know that it ranks between 10 to 20% 
over a course from one to three years, depending on your type of your business. Incrementality tests go between 7 to 15%, but over one year, because you restart your incrementality testing with new year, with new learning agenda that you define, new tests that you want to run. The effect is immediate, but it's also short. So potentially you can even achieve very comparable results with, with two of them. It's just one of them is going to be long-term and strategic and the other one is going to be short-term tactical, but both of them do bring business results. This is very clear, Sasha. Thanks a lot <laughs> for this fascinating discussion. Thanks a lot for your attention and uh, see you for the next Data Coffee.